Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey, everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy, and I am super excited that you are joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.4.DP.1.2, and it says to determine, which means to figure out, determine the mode, which is the amount that appears the most, the median, which is the middle value, the range, where we subtract the largest number minus the smallest number, in order to interpret or understand numerical data. So determine the mode, the median, or range to determine to interpret numerical data, including with fractional values represented with tables, stem and leaf plots, and line plots. So we've got tables, stem and leaf plots, and line plots, and we are determining the mode, the median, and the range. That's what we've got going on today. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I have created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public, and in these Breaking Down the Best episodes, I'm just walking through my thought process for when I break down the standard. So we'll do that for about the first half of the video, and then we'll hop over to the website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com, so you can see what resources you have access to which are strategically aligned to this standard with your taking on the best membership. So we'll break down the standard and then we'll go ahead and explore the resources that are aligned to it. Let's continue. So if there was an example, it says given the data of softball teams hat sizes represented on a line plot, determine the most common size, that would be the mode, and the difference between the largest and the smallest sizes, this would be the range. Some clarifications here, we need to make sure that they have a, these problems that we're working with have a real world context. And um, I mean, it's just that it should be in a real world situation. Making sure that we're providing students with opportunities where the mode will be different, meaning that there might be one mode, no mode, or more than one mode mode. Remember the mode is the value that appears the most. So for instance, if we have a bunch of data and we have um, one, two, three, fours and one, two, three, fives and those values appear the most, we would have two modes or more than one mode. If nothing repeats, then we would have no mode. And if we, if one number in particular has more than the rest, that would be one mode. So we do have video lessons here that showcase examples of all those. We'll get to that in the second half of this video. This says within this benchmark, data sets are limited to an odd number when calculating the median. So this is saying that when we have a data set, we need to make sure that our data set contains an odd number odd amount that we're comparing because when we're finding the median we're crossing off the smallest and then the largest and then the next smallest and next largest we need it to be odd for fourth grade to determine that median in fifth grade it can be an even number because in fifth grade we will be finding the average or the mean but we're not doing that yet in fourth grade so it needs to be odd and when we have fractions denominators are limited to two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, all of these right there that you can see. So make sure our denominators include those. Some related benchmarks that we have for the standard would be MA.4.1.3, which is our equivalent fraction standard. And 1.4 is where we are plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions. Here we, some terms that we need to know, line plot, Median, again, that's what I was saying before, is that we need to have odd values, so we're finding the middle number. The mode is the amount that appears the most. 
The range is where we're subtracting the largest number minus the smaller number to get our range of six. And stem and leaf plots look like this, which we explored a lot in the last video on DP.1.1. Where are they coming from in third grade? Some vertical alignment. We have 3.dp.1.2, which was the interpreting data. And then in fifth grade, we have 5.dp.1.2, which is the mode, which we have this year. The range, which we have this year. The median, but we can have odd and even data sets. And the mean, which is new, that's finding the average. So just know that they will be using all of this that you're teaching this year. We'll definitely apply and help them to really just focus in on the mean in fifth grade because the mean is a tough one to figure out. There's a lot of room for error of calculations. So it's really important that we knock it out this year with the mode, the range, and the median. Okay, purpose and instructional strategies. It says that the purpose of this benchmark is to introduce concepts of mode, median, and range as measures of center and spread in a data set. It's a way for us to analyze the data. We need to make sure that we're providing students with multiple opportunities to organize their data and to organize their data from the least to greatest, which will help them determine the range, the mode, and the median. Here they identify what the range is, subtracting the least value from the greatest value in a set. The mode is finding the value that occurs the most often. The mode occurs the most. And the median is finding the value of the middle of the set. Okay, the most important thing is that the first step is to put this data in ascending order, going from least to greatest. So make sure your students understand that. So common misconceptions or errors. They said that there may be no mode or more than one mode and that might trip them up a little bit. And I also said they might forget what each term means. They might forget the difference between the mode and the median and the range and all of that. So lots of practice will help. Here are some instructional tasks so you can and, and items so you can see the standard in action. It says to measure the length of 10 used pencils in the class to the nearest eighth of an inch. We'll create a stem and leaf plot and a line plot to represent all of the 10 pencils. And then from that, find the median, the range, and the mode, if there is a mode in the data. Here, notice that this is a line plot without X's. It has dots, so just be careful knowing that. And here it's saying, what is the mode? And that would be right here with the seven because it appears the most, all right? I think that's it for going over this standard. Let's go ahead and hop over to the website and see what you have access to with your taking on the best membership. All right, so here we are on the website, mccarthymathacademy.com. We're going to click the tab right here that says members enter here and select taking on the best. We're in fourth grade right now. And we're going to scroll down to the DP strand. All right. And we are right here, ma.4.dp.1.2, which is finding the mode, the median, and the range in the data set. The first page that opens up are your bronze resources, which include the video lessons and the printable student notes. So students can take down notes as they're watching the video lessons. So it looks like we have one, two, three video lessons. The first one will focus on mode, median, and range of whole numbers. We'll see this a little bit more closely, the, the sheet that goes with it, which is the same sheet that I'm using in the video. For the next video, we have mode, median, and range using mixed numbers. And the last video lesson is to focus mainly on the mode, whether there is no mode, one mode, or more than one mode, while also practicing the median and the range. So these are awesome video lessons to get your students some practice in. So the whole point of these video lessons is to make it fun and to make it click. Students are not expected to achieve mastery after just watching the video lesson and taking down notes. In order to achieve mastery, they have to practice. They have to be able to do it on their own, right? So that's why we have the silver plan. You scroll down and click the silver right there. Then you can click here for the printables for more practice. The way that this is kind of organized with the printables is that it does include the bronze video lessons and then the extra practice follows. So it makes it easier for you to be able to just print out and go and have the video lessons. You can make a little packet if you want to, or maybe you have the workbooks. It just goes with it. But here we have Matthew's test scores right here. And 
we're going to determine the mode, the median, and the range of his data. So first we'll organize it from least to greatest, then determine the mode, the median, and the range. Then after that, students will have extra practice. Now we have Isabella's test scores. Same thing, to put them in order, determine the mode, the median, and the range by answering the questions below. Students can use their notes from the video lesson to help them practice here. All right, then we have this video lesson, which involves the mode, median, and range using mixed numbers. Okay, again, we're going to arrange our data and determine the mode, the median, and the range. Then there's extra practice that looks very similar. And then here is the one with the mode. So this says to analyze each data set, determine whether there is no mode, one mode, or more than one mode. Then find the range and the median of the data. So you can see we have 17, 13, 19. These are odd numbers to help us with the median. Anytime we're finding the median, we need to make sure in fourth grade we have odd numbers there. Otherwise, they will have to find the average of the two numbers in the middle and we're not there yet in fourth grade. That's outside of the limits. So you can see, I think with this one was more than one mode. You'll have to watch the video lesson to see, but I think this one was um, no, an example of having no repeat values, so no mode. And then here we had one mode being nine and a half. Then students will have an extra practice that looks very similar. Again, we have odd numbers, 21, 23, and then this number here, okay? Then we have a math mission to follow, which kind of combines everything to an activity at the end. The directions say to write the fractions 0 fourth, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths on, a on tiny sheets of paper and fold them up. Create random mixed numbers by rolling a number cube and picking up one of the fractions and record that as a mixed number. So if you roll a three and you pick up the two fourths, you now have three and two fourths. Do this 15 times, recording the numbers right here. Then we'll create a stem and leaf plot and a line plot based on the data. And finally, determine the mode, the median, and the range of the data. So this is all going to be generated by you. So everybody's work might look different because everybody's numbers, all the data that they are collecting should be different, which will make this interesting. However, the mode, the median, and the range should be reflected in their stem and leaf plot and their line plots. So that's a fun one. Finally, for the silver plan, we have the video right here for math misconception mystery. That is located right here, right below where we clicked for the printables. Just click play for the video. I will walk you through the entire process. First, I'll explain that students will um, solve this problem on their own. This problem says to determine the mode, the median, and the range for the data set below. We have odd numbers again, finding the mode, the median, and the range. So students can work independently or with you know a buddy or something like that. And then they will press play as they watch four characters in the video solve the same problem. These four characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents. And the whole point is that three of the characters will make mistakes that students commonly make and only one of them is correct. So it's a really fun way to analyze the errors of others and then students can fill out their detective report stating who the most reasonable answer belongs to and why and then evaluating the work of the ones who were incorrect. So these are a whole lot of fun. And once you start these math misconception mystery episodes, there's one for every standard and your students are going to beg you for them. This is a great way to um, review before a test after students have had some exposure and practice with the skill. You don't wanna give this to them right away. You want them to have some practice under their belt and understand the concept before they start tackling something like this, okay? All right, and then finally, we have the gold plan. The gold plan gives you access to everything we've gone over so far, plus a mini assessment for each standard. So for 4.dp.1.2, we have this test. You can see it says, show what you know, and it has the standard right there. So show what you know, that means that it could be a test, it could be extra practice, however, you, however it makes sense for you to um, implement this is totally cool. These mini assessments usually are four to five questions. I believe that this one has four questions. 
you can see the variety type. We're talking about the mode based on the data, the median and explain your process uh, here, which ones are true about this. So we've got the median, the mode and the range all involved. Okay. And then for number four, if a new student arrives and we're adding another piece of data, how is that going to affect what we've already stated the range might be, right? So these are aligned to the standard and easy for you to just print and go. You got your answer key right there. You also have access to these episodes of Breaking Down the Best right here. Clicks, just one or two clicks away from all of your resources right there. These episodes are available on YouTube as well. They just contain ads. It's just a nice perk of it being, of being a gold member, it being right here with everything else. But really the biggest highlight of the gold plan is access to McCarthy Math 155, which is a daily math intervention aligned to the previous standards, the common core standards that we had in Florida. Now I know it says common core and I know that we are taking on the best standards right now, uh, but there are, if you've been practicing with these standards at all and you've com been comparing, you know that there are a lot of skills that are similar. So this is a great resource to have as well. The 155 stands for 155 video lessons for each grade level. So if we go to fourth grade, I'm letting you know right now there is nothing on mode, median, or range in fourth grade for this one, or even fifth grade because it just wasn't a standard. But you can see here, if you have students struggling with place value or adding and subtracting numbers with regrouping or multiplication, look, there's 16 multiplication video lessons, 11 division lessons factors, multiples, patterns, fraction equivalents and comparison, modeling fractions, all that stuff. Adding and subtracting fractions, decomposing, there's so many, relating fractions and decimals. Uh, we do have line plots there. So there's so much here that you still have access to. You just have to be careful of knowing your standards and knowing what might be a little bit outside. Maybe I don't use this video, but I could use this video. So just be careful with it. But there's a lot for you to pull from in practice, especially with the adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. All right, I think that is it. So I hope that this breaking down the best episode made sense for you, that you're able to now understand your standard, you know what's expected of your students, and you know that you have resources that have been strategically aligned to this standard and you're taking on the best membership. Before we go, let me remind you that what you wake up and you choose to do with your life every day it really does matter. Thank you for stepping into the best version of yourself to inspire your students to do the same. And thank you for inviting me into your educational space. I really love being able to support you and support your students and hopefully put some time back into your pocket so you don't have to be scouring the internet for all of your resources. I really want you to be able to enjoy your nights and your weekends again. So I hope that this helps you out. Speaking of time, I know that your time is valuable and I know that you probably probably have a ton of things to do. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go and I will see you in the next episode of Breaking Down the Best. Okay. Bye. Okay. So I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Okay. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right. For real now. Bye.